Chief of Department of Geography of Ashutosh College, myself, Dr. Shourab Dash, welcome all of you in this room. We are really thankful to our honorable speaker, Dr. Ohai Krishna Singh, to manage his uh, manage time for his, from his busy schedule to deliver the lecture here. Respected principal, sir, honorable speaker, invited my dear colleagues and my dear students and the research scholars. Today, we have gathered here in this online platform to listen a special lecture on postmodern urbanization organized by Ashutosh College in association with IQAC and in collaboration with Committee for Postgraduate Studies. Now I'd like to, uh, now let me introduce our speaker, Dr. Avay Krishna Singh. Dr. Singh is presently associated with Dr. Shama Prashat Mukherjee University, formerly known as Rachi College, as an assistant professor in the Department of Geography since 2008. As a bright academic career, Dr. Singh completed his graduations from Allahabad University in 1996 and post-graduations from the same university in 1999. Dr. Singh from Jawaharlal Nehru University in 2003 and awarded PhD from Patna University in 2010. The topic of his research was Pattern and Process of Urban Development in Bihar, a case study of Panamapolitan City, 1971-2001. Dr. Singh has published many research articles in reputed journals, both at the the national and Dr. Ovai has 30 articles in national and 10 in international journals. Dr. Ovai has also, to his credit, three books covering a large socioeconomic canvas. Dr. Ovai, sir, has preparing study material for IGNU. He has written six modules of different papers for the MSc in Geography program, proposed from the session 2024 to 2026. Dr. Singh has also on the e portal of the UGC, New Delhi. EPG Parshala is designed to provide quality study material for postgraduate students across the nation. He has successfully undertaken many minor and major research projects sponsored by uh, landscape. So, uh, postmodernism <coughs> is different. Now, without getting into the intricacies of postmodernism, I would highlight certain uh, points. What is postmodernism? So postmodernism is a departure, clear departure from modernism. Uh, the, the era of modernism, which ended supposedly, and in geography, we believe that after 1985, we are already into the postmodern period. So postmodern period is a departure from modernism. It's not only departure, but it's, it's a departure in all the thinking all the ideals, all the meta-narratives, all the grand narratives which modernity created. It is, uh, it is something which, is uh, which has a new beginning, but it hasn't taken a shape. Postmodernism is very fluid still. The, the concept is very fluid and the, uh, the best part is it is uh, uh, not very well understood by social scientists. Even Dr. Soja has uh, mentioned it, that it is, it is a fluid concept, which is, uh, uh, which, is, which is not very well understood and not very well deciphered. And more, most importantly, it is not very well delivered for the, uh, the common audience. So uh, uh, we might take some another class if uh, Dr. Saurav allow me and we'll definitely talk over only postmodernism uh, in geography definitely. as a movement. But today, since um, our topic is postmodern urbanization, yes. so I would like to um, uh, I would like to boundary my lecture on postmodernism, uh, postmodern urbanization. So before I do, I, I need to share the uh, small presentation which yes. I prepared. Please bear it with me for a couple of
Why this is happening? Saurabh, can you help me? Why it is multiple uh, screens are opening? Yeah. So I need uh, I need to share it window. Click sure, the window. Sir, can you send the meeting? Uh, can you send the presentation to me? Yeah. Yes, yes, I can. You will show. Yes, I'm not. Actually, presentation ta pati da ba na wakil. Or an infinity screens or something. Uh, so, should I send it to you? Uh, papi, I'm okay. uh, here, you please send it to me. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, I, I'm, uh, I just need to email you. Na? Okay, no issue, sir. Uh, uh, what is your email ID? Uh, I'm sending uh, you, sir. Please. I'm sending you. Just say, uh, na. Okay. S O U R A V. S U. No. S O U. Oh, okay, okay, okay. S O U R A V. Dot. Dot. D A S. D A S. Das. D A S. Das. Um, sir, I took any interrupt. Korchi, please don't share any personal information. We are doing YouTube live, kinte. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, the, sir, I'm sending my uh, LID in your WhatsApp, sir. Okay, please do that. I send it to you. <coughs> okay, sir. Not received yet. Did you get this? No, sir. Okay, sir, got it. Okay. Please do me the favor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yes, don't sir. know what the technical glitch is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me share it to the IT department, sir. It should have been a problem, but I don't know. It's all. This is the one thing I always have. A, I'm always scared of this online. <laughs> you never know yeah. when it gets. When it, this type of problem arises. Yeah. I have shared your presentations to our IT department, sir. But meanwhile, let me talk to the students. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. So, okay. uh, uh, what I intend to uh, do, students, that I I want you to give 
a broad idea of what postmodernism uh, postmodern urbanism is so what are the characteristics uske characteristics kya hote hain what are the 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 important uh, highlights of uh, postmodern urbanization and how it is different for uh, from modern urbanization so what i intend to do is i will uh, let you know ki uh, what are the ingredients of postmodern urbanization what are the characteristics of postmodern urbanization and uh, how it is different from urban uh, modern urbanization and uh, uh, after that we'll talk about uh, the difference between the so uh, you will do me the favor of uh, moving the slides and uh, so please come to the first slide next please uh again next post modern urbanization what is the concept the concept of the post modernization uh, is uh, now koi baat nahi hai mujhe jab maine when i said that was post modernism is an uh, like a movement which was uh, very much visible in the in literature especially in english literature and it was also visible in uh, architectural design of the some cities namely los angeles las vegas toronto and a few cities in germany so from there on it was it was being observed that something different something clearly uh, uh, a departure from uh, the modern outlook the modern the modern period and this this kind of departure was very well explained or it is very well uh, uh, clearly visible in the urban design or urban uh, planning and the individual planning of this uh, architectural design of the city so uh, next slide please now characteristic of post modernism post modernism uh, what are the basic characteristics uh, characteristics of post modernism uh, it is very important first is reaction to modernism now uh, now the uh, the reaction to modernism it is a uh, design or uh, it can be said that uh, uh, post modernism arose in late 20th century as a critic of modernism strict principles perceived as overly rational functional and simplistic so what did modernism do modernism ki kya khasiyat thi what are what were the uh, the the characteristic of modernism modernism was a period when everything was uh, supposed to be uh, uh, supposed to adhere supposed to follow the strict principles Uh, uh there should be a rationality there should be a logic if we we have a uh, traffic rules we have a logic of uh, why the the uh, the houses should be built in a certain style uh, what why there should be a, uh, lanes and by lanes the sewerage system there was a complete order and pattern and rationality in modernity but the post modern we find that these uh, rationality these principle are missing Uh, remember uh, the caveat and the, we should we should be very careful that we should not assume that post modern is is something which is chaotic it's not chaotic but it is certainly not following the principles of modernism so it is in reaction or it is in the departure to modernism that post modernism urbanization or design or planning is visible uh, second is emphasis on pluralism and diversity now unlike modernism which sought universal truths and principles post modernism celebrates diversity uh, complexity and contradiction now uh, the, uni- uh, mo- mo- the, the 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 most salient feature of modern period modern urbanization or modern uh, urban system is the 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 fact that it is always always sought for universal truth now universal truth means there should be some uniformity uh, the 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 building should be in a certain style they should follow uh, the the uh, map the uh, building plan that has to be approved by certain agencies and they need to be in a proper 
rational and logical manner now in post modern post modernism the diversity is celebrated the complexity and the contradiction diversity means one building has a different style of architecture another is completely different next is another different kind of uh, architecture this means the the individual uh, will and individual uh, uh, diversity and individual like uh, uh, likeness uh, or uh, indi individual favor uh, results or reflects in the design of the building so post modern it doesn't mean that there should be no street planning there should no sewerage but the design of the building and the the planning does not need not follow what it had been following in the modern period now now remember this kind of uh, urbanization is visible only in selected few uh, cities of the world like toronto las vegas Los Angeles. These are very, very clearly visible. They are postmodern cities. They are termed as postmodern city, but they these characteristics are also visible or also present in Indian urban system in our Indian urban uh, urbanization milieu. So uh, the next point is the skepticism of grand narratives. Now, what is grand narratives? Grand narratives is a notion of overarching. or uh, uh, overarching fact of uh, absolute truth grand narratives in modern period the narratives were uh, were meant that uh, the, uh, there should be a pattern there should be an overarching like suppose in modern uh, period we have uh, organic growth of cities and as well as we also have planned cities now organic organic cities are those cities which evolved uh, from a certain settlement from villages and later on became cities they 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 evolved into cities planned cities are such cities where planned which started from scratch so now in post modern period there is a kind of suspicion there is a kind of skepticism why should i follow the old narrative why should i paint my outer boundary or outer facade of my house or building in a pink color like jaipur is a pink city jodhpur is a blue city why it is a blue city why it is a pink city somebody decided and there must be some logic that the whole city should look beautiful the whole city should be Uh, no matter you 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 paint your interior in any any color of your choice but the outer uh, visible part of your building should be in blue uh, or should be in pink or as the case may be but in post modern era in post modern urban is this kind of things are challenged why should i i have in my individual taste and i am owner of this building i need not paint my uh, or i need not follow the others if everybody is painting blue or pink or red or white i i may go for some another color or i may go for some uh, multi colored uh, uh, paint or uh, or uh, uh, different kind of shades which is not uh, in the grand narrative or which is not in the scheme of the modern period so uh, there is a skepticism anything which now when i said it is a departure post modernism departure from modernity then it means it it is against the order it is against the principles of modernity it is against the the narrative narrative means something which is being laid down and others are expected to to the line we are against it the post modern period is against it simultaneously maintaining that the meaning uh, being against does not being chaotic it is not a situation where things go awry but it should not fall in line of uh, the principles of modernity now uh, another is diffused high and low culture so this is a one uh, more uh, important uh, characteristic of post modernism uh, which says uh, that it is as a diffused uh, high and low culture means there is a uh, amalgam of high or elite cultures as well as people from a low uh, class or low uh, economic uh, segment so in postmodern uh, urban system or setup 
we usually find uh, neighborhoods side by side having uh, high class uh, settlement areas or high class uh, colonies uh, surrounded by or 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 uh, alternated by colonies with not that much of uh, uh, higher uh, economic strata so this is one uh, highlight of post modernism earlier in a, in a planned city in modern period the colonies used to be uh, area for the colonies used to be allocated as per the purchasing power of the resident so we have pockets of uh, prosperity and we in modern uh, cities we we all we observe that there are many cities within a city in calcutta we have high class calcutta ultra modern calcutta kolkata as well as we have uh, slums in uh, slums also but in post modern period these kind of water type segmentation or segregation is not visible next slide please no uh, architectural diversity as i talked about this is one very very visible thing and this is one thing which marked the advent of post modern period when uh, uh, you might be aware of the establishment of los angeles and las vegas it is a good these are twin cities which are uh, in the middle of the midst of the desert area and now when these cities grew up they did not follow any settled or already established rules and regulation what they did was they have their own creativity and since there was no lack of uh, land there and every plot has a big size and they could do many experiments so so in these cities many architectural diversity was visible uh, for example one building has certain kind of entrance another kind had certain a uh, different kind of entrance somebody is building its uh, swimming pool in the front of the house while the another person decided to build the um, uh, swimming pool on the rooftop so this was architectural uh, architectural uh, uh, diversity which resulted in a kind of heterogeneous landscape and this heterogeneous landscape was clearly visible and uh, aptly so marked as a um, uh, post modern period or era decentralization of urban space very very simple uh, this is a period this is a uh, such cities do not have centralized uh, uh, centralized uh, cities like uh, earlier we used to have cbd central business district student must be aware of uh, there is a, in the center there is a central business district and the city grows either in a concentric zone manner or in a haphazard manner or in a sector model or we have different kind of theories of internal structure of the cities now what uh, we find in uh, this kind post modern urban uh, urban spaces that there is no center of the city there is no uh, such place like cbd there are plenty of cbd like hyderabad bangalore even in indian context we have a certain Uh, center of attraction or center of the city in the outskirt where it is acting as another cbd it has a multiple nucleus it does not have it doesn't have uh, uh, or uh, you can say uh, the uh, like the earlier counterpart or the post uh, sorry modern cities post modern cities do not have centralized nucleus based Uh, growth it has multiple nucleus and it has multiple cbd and they grow uh, uh, proliferate accordingly it's not they are not following any certain internal structure model mixed uh, use, uh, use development from uh, uh, sorry emphasis on local identity and context these cities are uh, a wonderful amalgam of uh, local uh, cultural Uh, local cultural manifestation as well as global or international styles 
so we find both kind of architectural style we we uh, uh, we find both kind of actors like uh, in even in rachi when we move to certain area like ashok nagar and the others we do have certain kind of localities where we have uh, houses built with the total local cultural uh, imprint on it like uh, tribal houses they still use the mud wall and they have certain uh, structure of the roof and the uh, the adjacent house is a totally modern uh, modern building with a complete uh, modernity or post modern outlook like the it has a different kind of facade it kind of it has a different kind of entrance so uh, it has a uh, local identities and context though dominant but there are also international imprint on the structure or the building of the city next use development again related to the land use uh, land use uh, development or land use pattern of the cities they are mixed in nature there is no complete segregation as we have in our cities that certain areas are dedicated for educational purposes where the land is easily available we find uh, police lines and other uh, organization occupying large chunk of uh, land at the outskirts of the city but here in uh, post modern urban space there is no such segregation you can find things side by side consumer consumerism and spectacle this is again related to the mall culture mall culture though is attributed to the modern outlook but the way it is the the mall culture is translating into hyper malls and supermarkets where the single space you can either dine shop or uh, have uh, uh, recreational activities so in a single space the family can do a lot of things so this is also a characteristic attributed to post modern period social and cultural plural pluralism as the name suggest we have different identities we have different communities we have different cultural organization living side by side now the the question may arise that these are the things uh, <clears throat> which is very common in modern period or modern urban uh, uh, landscape also how it is different the different is this that uh, this reflect the post modern ethos urban spaces often become melting pots of diverse culture lifestyle and social group even in modern period uh, we consider cities as a, as something like melting pot where people from different culture different uh, uh, outlook come together and they lose identity and become part of one so uh, but uh, in post modern uh, period this practice is even more pronounced revitalization and gentrification gentrification for the students clarification uh, gentr what is gentrification gentrification is uh, renovating old dilapidated buildings or old dilapidated old regions or clustered region or uh, a uh, certain segment of the city which is uh, not so fit for uh, human living they are reno renovated and uh, rejuvenated into modern and uh, advanced living settlement or living uh, places so uh, post modern urbanism often involves the revitalization of historic district and industrial areas generally industrial areas uh, which are uh, defunct and they are not in use or even they are in use they become uh, the focal point of slums and they can lead to they lead to gentrification and socio economic changes so uh, there is a emphasis on uh, revitalizing and gentrifying uh, gentrification of the uh, slum areas densely populated areas buildings uh, dilapidated buildings and uh, making them more livable and more uh, soothing to eyes also it, it's got some aesthetic beauty also 
uh, another point is important point is global and local interplay there is a recognition of global influences we all know we have uh, multinational corporations global media we have uh, global cities also while simultaneously we value local tradition and practices so the post modern cities are uh, uh, are global cities as well as they have ample room to accommodate uh, the local tradition and practices we are all uh, observing this and like in and go to any metropolitan city and uh, if some dignitary comes to a institution or organization what we do we have a wonderful infrastructure and we have all uh, modern and post modern amenities but the way we welcome them the we welcome them in a traditional manner with a traditional dance and song and folk music and we we accommodate our tradition our culture along with the uh, the the advancement of the infrastructure and along with the post modern uh, outlook so uh, in post modern cities we have a wonderful uh, blend of global and local identities so uh, next uh, before coming to this uh, we can sum up the characteristic uh, like in uh, in essence we can say that post modernism uh, yeah post modern urbanization and we can also say post modernism in urbanization represents a departure from uniform functional approach of modernism embracing instead a more fragmented uh diverse and playful approach to city planning architecture and social organization playful means uh the, the when the architecture or we are designing a building the the element of uh, playfulness or element of uh, creativity becomes more pronounced uh this results in cities that are not only center of economic and political activity usually they are center of in, uh, political and economic activity but also they become uh, kind of uh, i can use the word tapestry rich tapestries of cultural and aesthetic experiences so uh, there is a uh, complete amalgam and combination of uh, economic and politic political activities at one hand and uh, uh, culture and aesthetic uh, cultural and aesthetic um, uh, identities on the other hand and so the, both of them uh, get entangled into a, a mosaic of uh, different kind of landscape urban landscape which is different visibly different from the modern urban spaces uh most of these things we have already discussed sign of post modern urbanism first is architectural eclecticism eclecticism what is eclecticism uh, don't uh, get scared of the big words uh, it simply means it is an amalgam or uh, it is a mixture of different uh, type of uh, architectural style so uh, we cannot say as we say in modern cities that if you go to rajasthan or if you go to um, hyderabad you have a clear visible imprint of certain style of architecture like in rajasthan you have a certain style style of sculpture and building and architecture that is uh, more akin to uh, the rajasthani style or uh, more precisely the rajputana style whereas in uh, certain uh, areas you find mogal influences the period of mogal uh, style of architecture where we have gumbad and different kind of uh, buildings uh, again we if we go to the pondicherry and uh, uh, the coastal areas where the foreigners reach like uh, uh, cochin and uh, uh pondicherry dutch uh, or uh, people the spanish outlook is there the, the goa has a, another kind of so but in post modern uh, urbanization you will find everything coming together 
why uh, architectural eclecticism because there is the individuality is more pronounced if cert, somebody is interested in erecting his building in a certain style he is free to do it simultaneously or on the other hand people of the same colony want to build his house or her house in a mughal style so we, we can have a dutch style we can have a mughal style we can have a contemporary style we can have a european style we can have a ancient uh, indian style so it becomes a, 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 a interesting combination of different architectural styles uh, next point is decentralized urban development we have already talked about it uh, gated community and urban enclaves this is a, a very common uh, and visible development in the cities even in indian cities we 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 all uh, heard most of us might be living in gated uh, colonies also where you have a certain area and uh, surrounded by boundary wall and there are two or three entrances and these cities or the settlement or the the the, the building in within the this, these boundary wall may be different from the surrounding areas completely different from surrounding area and these type of uh, gated community these type of gated localities constitute various urban enclaves generally this is a phenomenon which which uh, came to surface in late 90s and early 20 uh, uh, late 90s and early 2000 uh, when uh, people having uh, better income or having high source of income or high income group they decided to to live in colonies which has certain kind of homogeneity in terms of their class so uh, a, an idea of a gated community or gated locality pop up even in our cities in uh, uh, category b towns state capitals like ranchi patna dehradun lucknow we have uh, numerous examples of gated locality which has a uh, so which the locality which is surrounded by the boundary walls and the entrance two or three entrances have gates with guards on so this is uh, another uh, sign of uh, postmodern urbanization cultural pluralism we have already discussed urban renewal we just talked about it consumer consumer consumerism and malls smart city initiative now smart city initiative is one initiative uh, which is not new to indian uh, context only uh, in other cities or in other countries of the world smart city initiative have been taken and in this what we do in a smart city uh, earlier uh, there is a misnomer and uh, i want to uh, clear it here also that uh, suppose some some city or some urban place is declared smart this does not mean that the whole city will convert or transform into smart city uh, parameters or will uh, start adhering to the smart city parameters or uh, the the uh, the steps or the stages as declared by the government what we do is we choose some part of the city and we grow that city we start evolving the city and we start putting all kind of uh, green initiative which are the the characteristic of smart city in that those particular area only meaning thereby that in a city the, the the larger part of the city remains the same while the certain segment small segment uh, is uh, taken up and is developed uh, in accordance to the parameters and and follows all the parameters of smart cities so smart cities initiative is also taken as a, one of the signs of postmodernism in urbanization transport and infrastructure as the name suggests transport and infrastructure uh, is uh, the development of metro rail system flyovers express way in most of the cities like uh, metropolitan cities like delhi kolkata chennai mumbai all these reflect post modern uh, dimensions or post modern approach to urban mobility and infrastructure now uh, even in small cities like uh, small matlab 
uh, though metropolitan but category b towns we have uh, uh, the 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 focus is on the urban infrastructure development especially transport related so uh, traffic snarls are becoming such a nuisance everywhere uh that uh, the the focus of the government or the municipal corporation is to make them smooth to to reduce the pollution to reduce the uh, manner lost to to make the movement smooth so there are plenty of creativity plenty of experiment and plenty of new things are coming mono rail tube rail um metro railways flyovers all these are taken as a development in uh, post modern period public spaces and art now public space is another uh, sign or another characteristic of uh, post modern urban spaces now uh, there is a, a movement in the western world especially in uh, even in european cities uh, which is related which is called place making now the idea of uh, creative spaces or uh, uh spaces for uh, spaces related to parks and open spaces where people come and enjoy and uh, have their best of their time now the the focus is on sp- space making space making means you create certain space which does not follow any barrier and which is which is open to all and there is no do then don'ts anybody can do anything provided it is uh, done in a keeping in mind public decency and other decorum so somebody is willing to uh, play guitar he can play guitar if somebody is willing to play football there he can play football if somebody is, uh, just want to uh, sit idle he can sit or he or she can sit on there so place making these are new concepts new things which are coming up in a in a post modern era informal settlement and contrast <laughs> uh informal settlement and contrast uh, if we talk about that this, then we can say that um, despite the development that we all talk about the coexistence of high tech urban zones with informal settlements informal settlements generally we use in Uh, urban uh, literature jargon as slums we we you first you first size it or we substitute slums as informal settlements which highlight the contrast and contradiction of typical post modern urban landscape in india in indian context as we talked earlier that we we can have side by side two type of cities one ultra modern post modern full of uh, luxury goods and full of luxury amenities keeping in uh, mind the the comfort and uh, uh, comfort and uh, joyfulness or comfort and uh, uh, what you say the word uh, you can use uh, luxury and comfort of the inhabitants whereas simultaneously we also cannot ignore the presence of slums this is very well displayed in the cities like gurgaon if you happen to travel to gurgaon you will find multi stories building apartments villas uh, uh, urban enclaves uh, uh, cohorts pockets of uh, prosperity and simultaneously in in a in a uh, close or adjacent areas you will also find settlement which are akin to be uh, considered as slums these are settlement where informal workers are there those workers those uh, laborers do do not have any license and they provide domestic helps to the uh, high rising buildings as well they provide uh, cheap uh, electricians plumbers and uh, many uh, uh, helps for the daily course of the people living in there so we have simul uh, side by side uh, post modern and uh, ultra luxurious apartments as well as uh, slums uh, there in the post modern period post modern urban landscape 
next please so what is difference difference kya hai the so, important part ki ye ye antar hai kya post modern urbanization mein aur urbanization mein uh ek to humne baat ki ki antar ye hai ki planning and development of urban spaces mein there is a difference architecture mein difference but how can we understand it so what are the uh, the difference first is architectural style as we have already uh, talked about modern urbanization favored functional streamlined and often uh, you can say uh, monolithic architectural style why monolithic everybody has to paint the house in blue or every every house should not uh, should be two uh, floor only every house should be of certain dimension and we have regulatory bodies also but in post modern urbanization it uh, post modern urbanization is characterized by a diverse uh, eclectic eclectic means a mixture of different culture and mixture of different styles and often playful architectural language why i am using the word playful because uh, i was uh, reading uh, Uh, an article about uh, the 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 architectural style and pattern of cities in germany as well as in uh, uh, toronto also uh, the focus is generally the people prefer to build their houses not to adhere or not to follow a certain stale modern principle but the the most important criterion is to make the house more beautiful uh, maybe uh, idiosyncrasy is there uh, i like my uh, my my lawn should not be in green it should be blue this is my uh, my choice so the, the the grass cannot be blue then i make the fit the area with the tiles colored in blue so joyfulness is there playfulness is there uh, it is an expression of my creativity it is an expression of the 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 likes and dislikes or not dislikes the likes of the 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 owner of the house so uh, this is one difference urban planning and structure mein bhi antar hai uh, wo kaisa antar hai uh, when we talk about uh, urban planning and structure we generally find again the same thing we generally find uh, that in modern period certain kind of planning was hammered in you cannot uh, uh, digress from it you cannot you cannot deviate from it the planning is that you have to leave the setback area of your building 3 feet 6 feet or uh, that uh, depends upon the varies from city to city you have to follow it so it, but in post modern period you need to follow a certain broad principle that you cannot make your house in the in the road itself or you cannot encroach upon the others uh, open area but what you make or how you make is totally dependent it's totally left to the the, the owner of the house so the structure structure is also different it it is not following any kind of uh, instructed principle or uh, uh, the 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 rules and regulation laid down by the Uh, respected municipal corporation cultural approach now uh, cultural approach we can say modernism sought universal solution and often ignored local cultural context in contrast uh, post modern urbanization on the other hand favors a more decentralized mixed use and sometimes organic urban growth so uh sorry uh, uh cultural approach uh, uh solution but in uh, post modern uh, urbanization uh, people em- embrace local identities histories and cultural diversities so uh, the 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 biggest argument which goes against the modernism modernism is that in modern period or in modern era remember modernity is not confined to urbanization only or post modernity is not confined to urbanization only 
we are uh, narrowing it down or zeroing into only for organization but it is a it is a kind of philosophy it is a kind of period like ancient period medieval period modern period post modern period we are ahead of the modern era so the 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 argument which which goes against or uh, uh, which is uh, always used against the modernity is that in modern period we want everything to be uniform uh the building should be uniform the rules and regulations should be uniform for everybody there should there should be no discrimination now what we say discrimination here in modern period is being used as a diversity in postmodernism so correct every uh, uh, should every body should be a law abiding city a law law abiding citizen but he or she should not follow or should not toe the line what Uh, the rules and regulation is laid down by the municipal corporation of the respective cities again the the uh, the caveat is the the caution is that we should not fall into the trap of chaotic growth but organic growth should be there organic mean uh, i i need to grow in a manner which should not be should not follow any pattern it should be jisko uh, hindi mein bolte hain yun hi aise hi grow ho raha hai so uh, uh, this is uh, something uh, which is very different from modern period another point is environmental concern modern urbanization is mai uh, hamesha jo often prioritize development over environmental concern in modern period aap jante hain there are lot of talks and debate that environmental concerns are uh, thrown to the back seat and development becomes priority we need road no matter how many uh, trees we need to cut down uh, we need to develop we need to make infrastructure uh, in the process severely damaging or severely exploiting our environment here in post modern period the post modern urbanization uh, tends to incorporate sustainability and environmental consciousness into urban design now the urban design should incorporate urban environmental concerns and they should be sustainable meaning thereby the growth is to growth should be there but the growth or the development should be judicious in nature it should not damage the environment or it should not degrade the environment so keeping in mind the environmental concerns development should be done should be done this is the prime emphasis of post modern urbanization social fabric modern urbanization aimed for a certain degree of social order and uniformity again uniformity is there social order and uniformity whereas post modern urbanization cities reflect a more complex diverse and sometimes fragmented social structure this is very visible this is visible in indian cities also the uh, the order is being lost now uh, now we have cities we have apartment culture we have people uh, who who uh, live in live side by side without actually being aware of the cultural identity of the neighbor so the uh, actually the the cities post modern cities are acting like a melting pot where uh, they reflect very complex diverse we have next door uh, neighbor who might be a south indian another might be from uh, north india or might from western india gujarat uh, or rajasthan and uh, we have a very fragmented social structure we do not have the structures that we usually experience during our uh, modern period that uh, there was a, a certain social order these social orders are totally fragmented now in post modern period they are not only being disintegrated but they are being fragmented also another point is uh, globalization we all know uh, in modern city we, uh, we were the part of the global economy but in post modern urban cities uh, uh, the cities are deeply integrated into global network balancing global influences with local characteristics we are not the part of global we are not only the part of the uh, the global economy remember globalization 
when it is started it was started for economy then thereafter it becomes globalization for every other thing globalization in fashion globalization in everything so modern period urban places were part of the global economy now global influence is here but the local or uh, the the local identity is also very pronounced so we are the part of global network a city is the part of global network but it does not mean that it is totally cut off from the uh, its roots or its uh, the original uh, uh, the 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 culture of the city so there is a, a fine balancing uh, act between global influences with local characteristic so uh, we have a building we have a restaurant uh, in post modern urban uh, city we have a, a restaurant which serves continental dishes which serves chinese dishes as well as some local delicacies also so you can order your uh, local delicacy pertaining to your cultural identity as well as you can have a, a global cuisine also so uh, in essence we can say post modern urban ages can be seen as a response and evolution from the principles of modern urbanization reflecting changes in cultural economic and social dynamics in the urban landscape next please uh i don't think time uh, support us these are some slides that what are the challenges and opportunity for post modern urbanization the first challenge is urban sprawl and congestion now you all are aware of those of uh, pg student must uh, relate urban sprawl is up hazard growth of the building at the outskirt of the city so this is becoming a, a great challenge so if there is no uh, principles or no rules and regulation being followed the sprawls are uh, going to be more pronounced uh, what are the opportunity efficient public transport system will grow to reach out the uh, the the lateral or organic growth of the city smart mobility solution which we have already discussed environmental impact is one another challenge opportunity it's sustainable design practices and green infrastructure green infrastructure means such infrastructure which emit less carbon dioxide and less uh, greenhouse gases uh, another challenge in gentrification and displacement jab hum when we gentrify when we demolish or when we obliterate the slums and instead of slum we we erect new buildings we provide new uh, settlement uh, opportunities but the people who are displaced from there those living in the slums are generally uh, displaced to the outskirt of the city now the the major problem is from outside the city they they have to come to the center of the city aap logo ne padha hoga cbd because for, for their livelihood and they cannot afford the to and fro the fare for the to and fro uh, commute uh, they cannot afford the commutation so this is a big challenge uh, next slide please next please evolution of urban planning in the post modern era Uh, i will share the slides you can keep it and you can share it with the students they can uh, study it shift from master plan communities to adaptive planning now master plan is plan for the whole city adaptive planning is individual planning kind of thing inclusion of community into input in decision making uh, participatory uh, things are uh, being encouraged that if the if a policy is being made the 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 input or the uh, the uh, the participation of the local community is a must mixed mixed income neighborhood we all already observing the, this that the higher group as well as lower income group are living side by side uh next saurabh ji do we have 5 minutes uh, sure sir sure uh, i'll conclude in less than 5 minutes okay sir. less than 5 minutes फ्यूचर ट्रेन इन पोस्ट मॉडर्न इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आगे है क्या कहा जाएंगे वॉट इज द फ्यूचर तो फर्स्ट इज इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ ऑटो ऑटोनोमस व्हीकल्स अभी हम लोगों ने पढ़ा एंड वी आर अवेयर ऑफ सेल्फ ड्राइविंग कार्स एंड स्मार्ट ट्रांसपोर्टेशन नेटवर्क 
ड्राइवरलेस कार जो टेस्ला ने टेस्ला ने लॉन्च किया सर्कुलर इकोनॉमी प्रैक्टिस सर्कुलर इकोनॉमी मीन्स रिड्यूसिंग वेस्ट रिसाइकलिंग एंड रिपर्पसिंग मटेरियल रिपर्पसिंग यू कैन से अप स्केलिंग अप साइकिलिंग देर आर टू वर्ड्स रिसाइकलिंग एंड अप साइकिलिंग इन रिसाइकलिंग यू यू यूज द यू डिमोलिश द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ दैट आर्टिकल एंड क्रिएट ए न्यू न्यू आर्टिकल और न्यू न्यू थिंग इन अप अप साइकिलिंग यू यू अपग्रेड इट you do not demolish it like tire you can use it as a sofa and you can use for ornamental purposes also uh, vertical urbanization yeah, five there minute, is a, name, five minute. Uh, uh, vertical okay, urbanization tall building with mixed use functions and vertical farms Achha. vertical farms banaye ja rahe hain fsr ki baat ho rahi hai so uh, these okay. are things okay. next these are some case studies you can google it you can find it woban in uh, germany singapore uh, curitiba in brazil these are examples some examples of post modern urbanization next characteristic we have already discussed buildings with a mixed architectural style in public space in corvo we have already Uh, talked about it with different nomenclature but the, they all say the same things we have already discussed it next uh next impact kya hai increase the economic opportunities hai new businesses will come up industries will thrive leading to job creations improved quality of life definitely डेवलपमेंट के साथ साथ इनहांस एम्यूनिटीज एक्सेस टू कल्चरल एक्टिविटीज एंड वाइब्रेंट सोशल सीन वाइब्रेंट सोशल मिल्यू तो चैलेंजेस ऑफ इन इक्वालिटी डिस्पेरिटी इन एक्सेस टू रिसोर्स एंड सर्विसेज बिटवीन डिफरेंट नेबरहुड दिस विल दिस चैलेंज विल रिमेन द डिस्पेरिटी ऑफ एंड इन इक्वालिटी विल ऑलवेज रिमेन देर विल बी ऑलवेज पॉकेट्स ऑफ प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड पॉकेट्स ऑफ जिसको हम लोग डिप्रेशन कहते हैं पॉकेट्स ऑफ प्रोस्पेरिटी देर विल बी रिच पीपल देर विल बी पेयर पुअर पीपल देर विल बी अल्ट्रा डेवलप्ड अल्ट्रा मॉडर्न अल्ट्रा लग्जूरियस अपार्टमेंट एंड देर विल बी ऑल्सो प्लेसेज वेयर बेसिक एम्यूनिटीज इवन रूडिमेंट्री फैसिलिटी विल बी मिसिंग पीपल लिविंग इन सच लोकेलिटी विल बी डिप्राइव ऑफ बेसिक रूडिमेंट्री फैसिलिटी पर्टिकुलरली in indian context next so uh, these are something uh, you can study and find out emerging technology smart infrastructure digital connectivity these are all the characteristic of smart city these are all characteristic of post modern cities next i think this is the last slide uh, we can do away with this hum log jante hain hota kya hai urban rural boundaries will be uh, gone there will be no uh, clear demarcation of rural and urban boundaries the revitalizing historic and neighbor, historic neighborhoods usko hum log gentrify kar rahe hain baat ho chuki hai diverse and inclusive community we have already discussed this next sustainable approaches to post urban urbanization the most important thing is we should focus on renewable energy efficient waste management system green space and urban agriculture no new concept uh, creation of parks rooftop gardens kitchen gardens community farming initiative these are some initiative which have already been taken place or which are uh, being uh, used in present context also but in future in post modern urbanization these will be more pronounced and more uh, highlighted next so ready to embrace the future unlock the potential of post modern urbanization i know uh, we are running short of ta- time but anybody any any student who want to interact a couple yes. of questions i can take okay uh, thank you so much sir for delivering an outstanding lecture on post modern urbanization which is quite a difficult to understand uh, but your vivid explanations and demonstrations made this so easy to us and comprehending to sir you have uh, shared your uh, personal experience and knowledge uh, with us from global 
uh, examples. You have mentioned you. Uh, basic characteristics of modern cities and postmodern cities. Also, the difference between the postmodern and modern cities uh, with changing land use pattern. You have perfectly mentioned the different signs of postmodern urbanizations and also uh, challenges and opportunities of postmodern urbanizations with its future trend and uh, finally introduce the concept of sustainable approaches to um, postmodern urbanizations. So thank you so much, sir. Thank uh, you, thank you, everybody for giving me the chance and uh, hearing so patiently. <laughs> now the platform is open for short interactions. If someone have any yes, yes, anybody query, you have to please uh, ask, sir. Uh, may I ask a uh, simple question yes, please, to you, please. sir? In your please, please. Uh, one in your slide, you have mentioned the creative space, sir. In our uh, new town area, which is a smart city, yes. we have mm -hmm. uh, found some uh, creative workspace. Okay, sir. What is the basic functions of the creative workspace in now the, the the creative workspace? The idea is uh, that space may be used uh, not adhering to any uh, old principle. Okay, that use may be used. That space may be used for creative purposes, like I mentioned, place making yes. or space making is a new concept which is emerging in the uh, uh, Western as well as the European country. But the whole idea is that somebody will say yeah. parks are there, open spaces are there. Mm -hmm. So what is the need of making or creating new spaces? Yeah. Now, the mm -hmm. idea is that these places will be open for all sort of creative creative activity without any, any, any kind of uh, checks, uh, any kind of do's and don'ts. Yeah, in terms of yeah, yeah. Uh, but but uh, public decency and decorum mm -hmm. will be there. It should mm -hmm. not uh, make problem for others. But this space, it may be in the middle of the city, and somebody wants to dine there uh, yeah. in the middle of the city. He can do that. So it is uh, joyfulness. The most important oh, part is joyfulness. Yeah. If if an elderly couple wants to sit in the middle of the road and want to have a uh, cup of tea. Uh, he, uh, yeah, they yeah. should be allowed for that. So uh, this is a, a kind of creative space. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any other questions from anyone else? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, myself, Sumit Paja. Sir, I have a question that uh, is the postmodernism a threat to the heritage cities? Because uh, in case of uh, Jaipur or Jodhpur or the heritage cities like Kolkata, the gentrification uh, is this will be uh, a very threat nice to heritage? No, 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 it cannot be a threat to heritage city because uh, smart uh, postmodern cities are not proliferating or not usurping the territory of the heritage city or any city. It is evolving from within. So the postmodern city, the most appropriate city to be uh, termed or uh, convert into postmodern city are the cities which are being planned. The cities which are being planned. Now, uh, for every postmodern characteristic which we discuss today, including gentrification and renovation, this does not mean that the the we also talked about the cultural diversity this does not mean that something which is different need be need to be demolished or be, need to be assumed just because it should be more uh, uh, akin to postmodern idea of uh, urbanization so there cannot be any threat the the cities like jaipur cities like fatehpur sikri cities like agra will continue to uh, to be like that but the the new areas, the 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 lateral expansion of these cities might uh, adhere to the ideals or the the characteristics or the parameters of postmodern cities. But those cities, th those buildings which are already there, they I don't think they are uh, having any kind of threat or any kind of competition also. But this is a, a movement, a kind of a, a development towards, away from modernity. Okay, thank, you, from thank, thank you, Samir. Thank you, Samir. Any more query from anyone else?
Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, now I would I would like to request our senior most faculty member of our department and Dr. Shaini Mukhopadhyay to offer a vote of thanks, ma'am. Thank you, Shorab. Am I audible? Yeah, just now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, good evening to everyone. I, Shaini Mukhopadhyay, feel very privileged to deliver a vote of thanks on behalf of our college um, uh, at today's seminar on postmodern modern urbanization. Actually, learning is always a good uh, opportunity to feed our mind as it helps us to grow. And through such interesting uh, topic uh, of the seminar, we actually get a chance to boost our knowledge. Uh, so I would like to express my appreciation to our speaker, Dr. Abhay Krishna Singh, who have taken time out of um, his busy schedule to deliver his talk. And um, I would also like to express my heartfelt thanks to all those who have made this event possible. And actually, I would like to start by thanking our principal, sir, that is Dr. Manush Kobi, who have always been very supportive of our initiatives and encouraged us to strive for excellence. And um, also, I would like to extend my gratitude to our IQSC coordinator, Dr. Srabuni Rai, and a special thanks uh, goes to our uh, teacher, uh, our one of the senior teacher, Dr. Shorab Dash, and our HOD, uh, that is, uh, who is um, Dr. Debobruto Pondo, and also the members of MO committee and um, the postgraduate research committee who took the responsibility of this seminar to be a success. Finally, I would like to thank each and every one of you, our faculty, students, and IT staff, Sri uh, Shomnath Dash and Sri uh, Shuman Chongdar for your support and participation in making this event a grand success. Thank you, sir. Very Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for giving me uh, such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir.